Just let your soul glow. Just let it shine through. Just let your soul. I can't. I can't. We're we're gonna talk about soul. Real cool dude. Yo, what's good, real cool people? It's your boy David, the real cool dude, coming at you with another review. As you saw in the opening, we talk in soul. Soul is Pixar's newest film brought to you by the director of Inside Out. I wanted to highlight that at the beginning of this because you're going to see how much this parallels Inside Out. Our lead is Joe Gardner, played by Jamie Foxx, who is a jazz musician who dreamt of being a star and is now a substitute teacher. And he has never lost sight of that dream. That boy, he like him some jazz music and he ain't never gonna give up on his jazz music. And as we've seen from the commercials, he lands the gig of a lifetime and he's all excited and happy about it. And he's so excited, he don't see them holes in the ground and he falls down a hole and poof, he ain't black no more. He a blue puff. Okay, yes, he becomes a blue puff. We see the blue puff, the blue spirit, the wisp, if you will, because it kind of reminded me of the wisp from Brave. And while he's in this afterlife as this blue puff, he goes through some shenanigans and ends up in this, not quite purgatory, but it's the beginning life, pre-life, as opposed to afterlife, where it's the spirits of those who might not have even been born yet as they are developing and maturing and so then being able to go down to earth and you live your life in your meat sack human body. While he's there, he ends up going through all these things and becomes a counselor, a mentor for one of these budding souls. And this soul is number 22. 22 is voiced by Tina Fey. And I really, really dug her character. She's, she's a mess. She's a wreck. <laughs> she, <laughs> she just can't get it together. This soul has been up there for thousands of years. Done made Abraham Lincoln dishonest. Done pissed off Socrates. Made Mother Teresa cry. Made Gandhi yell like she is the worst. But she's fun. <laughs> and he's been tasked into giving her the spark that she requires in order to finally transcend into human form. And after some more shenanigans, the two of them end up on Earth, but in different bodies, but they get to have this experience together where Joe gets to see himself through the eyes of another and gets to finally understand and realize that the life you live is worth living. The goals that you have set for yourself are minuscule. In the grand scheme of things, you matter no matter what it is you do in your life, as long as you loved and were kind to others. Soul number 22 experiences and realizes that you don't have to focus on finding your spark and finding your purpose because living life itself, the, the joys, the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs of what the journey of life is, is rewarding all in itself. So again, that's what was kind of interesting about this story is they both wanted different things but still needed the same core values to be better people slash spirits. Now that sounds all good and dandy, right? It sounds like, oh wow, that's a wonderful magical story. Pixar did it again. Eh, here's where I have some issues. The biggest issue that I had with this movie is that it felt too derivative. It was like the first Pixar movie where I'm like, that didn't feel like a wholly original idea. Like it felt like here's a little, well not a little bit, here's a lot of bit of Inside Out and here's a little bit of Up and here's a little bit of Incredibles and here's a little, like it felt like it pulled from all of its previous resources to make this movie and so I wasn't quite as captivated by anything because it all felt a little too familiar check it out Joe is suffering through a midlife crisis he's working a job that he doesn't like and he feels like he's meant to do more but the world keeps stopping him from being what he wants to be sounds a lot like Mr. Incredible doesn't it and then you have these two 
uh, ethereal creatures who have to go through these whimsical journeys in a life outside of Earth to then learn and grow and be a better person on Earth. Sounds a lot like Inside Out, doesn't it? And then all of this journey to find out that at the end of the day, it's not one thing that matters. It is the life that you lived and the joy that you had with those you love that matters. Sounds a bit like Up, doesn't it? And that was my issue. Like, it's great. This, this movie is written very well. We dig into black culture in a cool, subtle way, not an overly preachy way. So it's able to be digested by multiple audiences. It does all the right Pixar things, but I feel like Pixar set the bar so high on itself that when it feels derivative, it feels like it didn't quite reach said bar. And that's what's really weird about this movie. Because again, it's great. It's fantastic. Check it out. I highly recommend checking out checking it out. It's great that it's available on Disney Plus. You don't gotta pay nothing extra to watch it. You just get the regular subscription and clickety click, you got it. So please watch it, please enjoy it. Um, if nothing else, for the culture. Yeah, that, that's my only issue with, with the movie. But overall, it is very well uh, written. Uh, the actors are fantastic. You get a few surprise voices in there. At least they were surprises to me because I hadn't looked to see the full cast list before. I didn't even recognize that was Tina Fey as 22. One of my favorite talk show hosts over in the UK named Graham Norton. He plays this character named Moonwind. He's absolutely hilarious. Everything is handled so well in the craftsmanship that you would expect from Pixar. The environments, oh my gosh, they looked photorealistic. It felt like they shot stuff in real life and then inserted these CG characters. It was phenomenal. It looked great, sound great, felt great, but still just something was missing. Ironically, the movie's about people finding their spark and I felt like this movie was missing its own spark. And that's my time, people. Hopefully you liked the review. If you did, be sure to hit that likey-like-like -like button. And of course, if you like all the chocolatey goodness, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You can find me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, at RealCoolDude, R-E-E-L, Cool Dude. Y'all -E -E know the deal. <sighs> that's it, folks. I mean, unless Disney Plus pulls some other magical stuff out of their hat, that's it for 2020. And I'm sure, you know, all of us are ready for 2021. <laughs> Let's go. Thank you guys for watching. I'm always the real cool dude. And as always, keep it real. Hollywood like out here living the dream. I'm the chocolate man who loves silver screens. Giving movie reviews is the thing I do because I'm the real cool dude. <laughs>